G'day guys, welcome to Spaces Arcade and today we're going to look at the Anaglyph 3D setup on the Virtual Pin guys and I tell you what, this is an awesome setup this is not something that should be seen as a gimmick uh, once you set this up you will want to keep it this way that's how it is, there's a great 3D depth to the table when you choose this mode and you use a shader, which is what we're going to do today, and I'll show you how to set that up to get this 3D effect, guys. And there is actually in VPX a setting which you can actually set the 3D mode, um, but I had no success with that, and I know a number of other people didn't have success with that either. So we're going to go through the reshade method, which is adding a separate shader to VPX, and I'm going to show you today how to install it how to configure it so you can get this 3D goodness from VPX. And the thing is, guys, is that when you look at the way you play pinball these days, you've got a couple of options, right? So if you're playing on a desktop mode and having a desktop view, you get a bit of a 3D, it's sort of a pseudo 3D view of the table. And that's cool and that looks good, but as soon as you come to a cabinet, cabinet is very much top-down view guys and it becomes a little bit like you lose a lot of the 3d effect and sometimes when tables have really good lighting it can help with that but that this is really the achilles heel when it comes to cabinets guys it really is you've got everything else going for it in terms of the cabinet but this top-down view can really make the tables feel flat well anaglyph 3d solves all that it gives you a full 3d representation of the table guys and seriously when you see it you will not want to go back so get into this get into the configuration sort it out what you need to do is also get these glasses these are called triovers uh, glasses and they're a magenta and green pair of glasses they look cool they feel good and you know the cool thing you know the difference between this and going to like full vr is that you know you can chuck these glasses on guys you can have a couple of them for friends Everyone can enjoy the 3D of the table and still enjoy the, the surroundings. You grab your beer or whatever, right? It's not like VR where you're totally enclosed. And I mean, VR just looks amazing. Let's not get away from that. But, you know, when you want this other option and you want to use your full cab and you want to see the surroundings and see color DMD and everything else, this is the perfect option, guys. And so these particular glasses because you, you can get like red and blue type of 3D glasses, but these ones, the Trio Viz glasses, you can pick these up, guys, for, I don't know, 5 to $10, really, and then I think get like 4 for 20 USD. Search on eBay, you'll find them. The good thing about this, two good things, one is, is that they were used for some of the PS3 games a while back, and so they were the specific glasses for those. And so they have certain optics which were made for that. And the new reshade that I'm going to show you today, especially the new version, actually has a mode that's specifically for these glasses. I can tell you right now, when I set up the 3D Anaglyph with these glasses without the update, it was pretty damn good. But now with the update, all the colors have come together guys and i've got very little convergence issues in relation to the 3d that i've set up across the table so far so highly recommend getting these um, but if you do have other 3d glasses in terms of blue or red because these are the magenta green type they will still work and you can still select those settings uh, within the settings within the render which we'll see shortly so guys, enough of the chat. Let's get into it. Let's work out how to do this. There's a lot of settings in here, guys. Don't feel daunted. Um, there's a few areas that you need to change and you'll get it set up for your system. Let's take a look. All right, guys. So the first thing you want to do is to go to the reshade.me website and then select download from the homepage there. There's two options to download. You don't need the one with the full add-on. You just need to download the latest version of Reshade. Once that's downloaded, then just click on the setup and it will come up with some applications that it's found. But just to be sure, we're going to browse 
through to the pinball the pinball x executable and then we go next once that is selected and now it asks for what is the rendering api for visual pinball what does it use uh, we're going to put direct x9 and now it's asking for any preset any files that you may have you just need to skip that and now it's looking at all the effects that it can install so you can install a ton of other different types of effects the ones that we are interested in is the depth 3d by blue sky defender so click that go next it downloads it also has a number of other sweet fx files to install you can just go next over that and now it's downloading the depth 3d files to install now out of all of these ones there's a bunch of others with vr and 3d to else etc you can actually unclick all of those if you want and just focus on the super depth 3d once you've clicked on that you can go next and then finish all right guys so now when you fire up uh, virtual pinball let's go into here you won't see anything different when you first start but once you load up a table and so let's open up Tron Legacy here. And as soon as we go into play, you only get a message up the top there. You can see it says reshade that automatically comes up. And it says compiling three effects remaining. And it does say that this may take a while and the application could, could become responsive. So you just need to wait and then bam, you can see it's already thrown itself into a form of 3D mode. You can see the graphics have gone all a bit crazy. But now what we want to do, because this won't work out of the gate like this, we need to now go into the settings. So you see at the top there, it says press home to start the tutorial. So let's do that. Okay. And now the interesting thing that happens for me here actually is that this window, which is, which is where we're going to do all the settings, comes out like this big long bar which is a bit difficult and it actually disappears off the bottom here and I can't make it smaller but what I've found is that if I resize this out a bit and then grab the top and then just pull that down a little now when I come down here you can see this bottom bit is now accessible so I don't know why it does that the old version used did that to me as well which was a little annoying but I want to basically resize it. there's going to be a lot of settings here so I'm going to resize it but I'm going to do it so that I can still see the bottom of the table here and up the top is actually asking if we want to um, go through a tutorial now you can do that guys but look we're just going to get straight to it and I'm going to skip it and now we're in the settings area. Now what it shows first is what's actually been selected in terms of the uh, the filter. And you can see it's already selected Super Depth 3D. We don't want any of these other ones selected, so that's all good, ready to go. And now I'm just going to resize this up because we're not obviously using that top bit. All right, guys, so now that we're in the settings, you'll see that there is a whole bunch of settings. And don't worry, it looks very, very daunting at first. Even right down the bottom here, I think we scroll down and we have some more settings at the bottom. Don't worry about it. There's only a few things that we need to change. The main ones are up here at the divergence and the convergence area. Um, that will give us our depth you'll see that there's actually help on every single one of these if you do want to go through them all guys but you don't have to change them all that's for sure uh, there's other sections here that simply you won't need to use unless you've got a specific setup uh, which is going to need to tweak that but don't worry about a lot of these until after but one of the key things that we have here right now down at the bottom here we need to change the mode and see we've got the 3d display modes currently it says side by side and if I just pull this up higher a little bit we can see that yeah we've got a replication of the pinball machine we don't want that for 3d anaglyph so we need to change that setting so if I just come down to that setting again and we can see here the stereoscopic options 3d display modes and if I pull down the drop down box here You've got side by side, top and bottom, 
line interlace, etc., for all the different types of modes. Now, if you've poured, got a set of red and green glasses already, and you don't have the specific ones that I have, you can go through and just select these and try out each one of these and see if it works with your particular glasses. That's the first thing to do. So even if I just put this to 3D green magenta, then if we look down the bottom here, you can see now it's changed and it's a single table and it looks a little bit whack. <laughs> so we need to configure the depth and the convergence. Now for us though, uh, we actually have um, specific glasses that it supports and what's going to happen, just so I just want to let you guys know, right? So in this option area, we've selected the 3D green magenta. As soon as I select, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a second, but as soon as I select the specific glasses I have, this whole section will change for me, guys. So um, just take a note of that. But if you are using just normal red and green, uh, red and blue glasses or another type, then what you'll need to use is this perspective slider. And when you highlight over these guys, you can actually grab this and slide it. And you'll see down the bottom here when I do that, while I'm in this mode, you can see it moving around, right? So you'll need to do that if you are using normal glasses. Otherwise, this section actually changes when we enable it for all the glasses that I have. And right down the bottom here, the bottom of the options, we've got the Infocolor. 3D emulator and so what we want to do is change that 0 to a 1. Okay just be aware that when you do that guys your machine might seem like it's locked up just wait for about 5 or 10 seconds and then it will come back and you'll be able to move again. So now that I've got that changed you'll see that that section where it said the 3D display mode uh, is now changed and we've got other options there for in for color. Uh, along the bottom there and a key one that we want to look at and tweak is the focus Okay, so that was the different name slider uh, When you don't have these glasses that we just saw before These other ones don't worry about now the key thing here is There's just a lot of tweaking here guys and trial and error to effectively get this to look good right and in terms and you got when you have your glasses on guys it's just a lot easier because you can bring the stuff together and see where it actually connects and turns into 3d right but right up the very top of these settings if we go back divergence and convergence this top one again if i just put my mouse on that it's a slider and i can move it backwards and forwards we come back down here you can see that's moving it backwards and forwards so that's the first one that you want to play with and work, work that around maybe a little bit early down the bottom here again it's all going to depend on your setup guys so it will be a little different and then from there you, the next one down is the, the separation and the first one here on the left if I grab that slider and I just come back down again here and then I'm, I'm sliding it again left and right you can see it's adjusting it again further okay that's just me adjusting that one and then again this side come back down here and adjust that and it's got a little slightly slight adjustment there guys very hard to do without actually seeing it in 3d of course but those are the key key ones you need to play with to get it right and if you then need to tune it in a little bit if we come down to the stereoscopic options and now in the infocolor focus one that bottom one there, if I grab that and move it backwards and forwards, you'll see down the bottom there's another slight adjustment. And again, it's just too hard to show you exactly how to dial this in by just looking at this without the glasses. You just can't do it. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go through and I'm going to tweak these settings and get my 3D perfect for my glasses and my system and then I'm going to show you all those settings and if you want you can certainly start with those settings on your setup and see how you go but yeah you're likely going to need to change it depending on how you've got your PC set up if it's portrait or landscape uh, what glasses type that you have and those things will have an impact on the settings that you have here all right so let's go do that and I'll come back uh, once we have it all set up Okay guys, so once you've gone through that process and changed all your settings, then you'll end up 
with something that hopefully works for you and it really is a bit of a trial and error and I'm just showing you now my settings that work for me and you can certainly try these and see how you go uh, but ultimately I think it's pretty much going to be specific to each uh, setup that you have I'll just scroll down to get these final ones on the bottom here there you go and that guys yes is my complete setup of settings so yeah give those a try as I said it's really just those other ones that you really got to play around with the key sliders especially in the divergence and convergence up the top there and uh, then when you've if you've selected the in for color options then also the uh, the in for color focus is a key one as well um, so yeah guys give it a try as i said it is a little bit daunting with all the the options uh, but there are just a few there and once you're wearing the glasses you'll see it dial in pretty quickly another thing that you can do is that you can use this depth map view and this is a quite a quite a cool little option it's just up here and if i click that over and then i'll move the screen up you'll see that we have now got just a white table and it's showing actually the height um, in darkness and yeah obviously it looks a little little blurred uh, without having the glasses on but yeah with the glasses on you can see this is a full depth map uh, without the actual graphics so it's a nice way of testing the depth and there's a couple of views here that was stereo view this is a normal view that gives a, a different type of view of that and then you're back to uh, the standard view which again for me wearing the glasses here I can see that this is uh, all nice and 3D there's also a couple more settings that you may need to adjust one is the swap 3D axis here and if I swap that you'll see it uh, just change slightly but uh, that um, it actually says use for 3D pinball games and then you may have to swap the eyes as well with well, the swap uh, swap the eyes is actually up here and that swaps the, the left and right to right to left as well and so again just using those adjustments guys just to see what works well for you uh, might be something that you need to do again just a little bit of playing around with those and that will uh, get you there in the end and the last thing actually we do need to do before you go back in and and play I mean you don't have to do this but you might get a six or seven performance um, frame hit if you don't and that is to go into performance mode here just click that and all this all the settings uh, disappear it's basically just gone back to the uh, to show all the different filters and if you want to go back into the settings then it's simply just take performance mode off again and now we're back into the settings again guys so yeah just do that before you then hit the home button to then get out and then we'll be back to the table so just going to hit home now and then we'll be back Alrighty, so for without the glasses you're just going to see the table look just slightly weird it sort of looks like it's got some weird edges and stuff um, and it's like a little bit blurry but clearly as soon as you put the glasses on then this table absolutely pops guys and if I can just explain to you what it looks like because again you won't be able to see it but this hopefully maybe give you a bit of an idea when I put my glasses on now and have a look at this table so when I look at it guys things like this here is is up about two inches in the air right like there's 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 depth there you know this little popper thing here that's like about an inch um, this back thing here you can see all these targets are up in the air these ramps are completely up and this spaceship is up high like about that much and ramps about that much um, there's heaps of depth here guys like this this flipper is well down this ramp seems like it's a good inch up in the air it's just really weird obviously you can't see this but that's what I'm seeing guys you know this light is right up high this ramp is like nice and high this one goes up underneath you know that that's the 3d effect that it gives such a shame you can't see it and then when you've got a ball actually flying around here um, the ball itself 
looks um, really trippy because it, it looks solid and again you're just not going to be able to see it unfortunately but for me that is a chunky round ball and when it goes under the under the ramps and it looks like it's actually going under the ramps guys all right well i hope you uh, spend the time to go through all those settings and when you do you will be rewarded with some beautiful 3d some nice colors especially using the glasses that i have all right let's wrap this video up all right guys i hope you managed to follow that it's well worth the effort and uh, the time to dial it in you'll be loving it once you do guys now that works across all the different vpx tables like there's nothing else to set up uh, nothing in vpx to set up if you do it this way and um, the only thing to think to look out for is that some tables in terms of the the layback um, and the field of view you may have to tweak on the tables just to get it looking perfectly right across the entirety of the table some of the tables have just slight like this one here for example on tron i get a little bit of um, almost convergence issues just on the edge uh, but the rest of the table is okay and also when you get into that fine focus uh, it's good to focus in on the play field and get the uh, all the insets nice and clear because that's what you're normally looking at that may mean that some areas may go slightly out of focus it all depends on how the table was built some tables are better than others but guys once you do dial it in you pretty much got like 95 percent of all vpx tables in my experience are all going to play really nicely just a few might be a few little little things that won't bother you though there'll be a few there that that for whatever reason don't can't dial in so just be careful with the tables that you choose you might want to dial in one to see how it goes then look at another table and see how that is go into the vpx settings also adjust the layback again there's a little bit of twigging around but once you find the magic formula it will work predominantly across all tables guys so that's it that's where we're going to leave it i hope you enjoyed that and got something out of it Remember to like and subscribe if you like this sort of video and uh, we'll look to do some more in this emulation space, show you how my stuff is set up. But until next time guys, ciao for now.